On the show today, we talk about black and white, or I should say Susan does. And because of that, our symbols are also the colours black and white. And as always, we interpret the dreams and answer the questions you sent in during the week. Welcome to So You Think You're Awake with Michael Sheridan, Heidi Brooke and Susan Pullen. Our show is about dreams, guidance and healing and our phone number is 425-373-5527. If you have a dream, a dream related question, you want to connect with your guides for advice or you can call with questions for Susan about healing and changing old life patterns. Once again, the number is 425-373-5527. Thanks to everybody who sent dreams to radio show at dream-analysis.com. Please continue to send them in. That's radio show at dream-analysis.com. That's where we get all the sh- dreams we uh, do uh, between calls. So, Susan, you wanted to talk about black and white. Why? Yep. And black and white thinking. Black and white thinking. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, this is something that's it's come up with a few clients lately. I th- and I think we all have a black and white attitude to certain things in our lives. Yes. You know, not, yes. Maybe not everything. Yes. And so uh, I thought we might start with um, uh, an example of a dream that has black and white in it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you were asking about orcas. Yes. Because they come up a lot in the show. Yes, uh, they do. Surprisingly, dolphins and orcas come up a lot because they signify channeling. So we have lots of people send dreams in with those in them. And uh, you were asking, does the black and white in the orca, is it significant? And it is. It's just like the word killer in killer whale is significant, too. It's it's a fear uh, seeing something as uh, very potentially evil. <laughs> and and um, of course it isn't, but, you know, people have to overcome that. And we see that actually a channel we have, even though we don't have orcas, we'll see later on in the show uh, dreams we got from somebody who is a channel uh, where they have to overcome things and we, so we can see where their fears come from. Um, but anyway, a look at a black and white dream. Uh, let's take a look at one first. This one's called uh, a small one. Santa and I go in circles. I'm riding in a taxi cab in the back seat. A friend of mine who is a very psychic healer is in the front passenger seat and Santa Claus is driving. So, of course, the taxi cab has to do with channeling or good gosh, (laughs) a a taxi cab has to do with counselling because they take people from where they are to where they need to uh, go on a one to one basis. So they signify uh, helping people get to where they need to go on a personal uh, level. So that's what taxis signify. And then a friend who is a psychic healer is in the front seat. Now, that's good. But the problem there is the dreamer's in the back seat. So uh, and she's in the front passenger seat, uh, which isn't as good as being in the driver's seat. So the the dreamer is both a psychic, a healer and a counselor. And we've seen this combination many times for this particular dreamer in other dreams. So it's quite stunning how frequently you can see the three of these come together. But she's still taking a back seat um, and she shouldn't. And what's the backseat? The backseat part, of course, is the counselling that she needs to add that string to her bow. Not add it, but advertise it as this is something that I do. Um, And then what have we got? Santa Claus is driving. So Santa is driving is good. Santa uh, is about bringing us gifts or about our gifts. So these are the dreamers gifts. And then the colours red and white are about um, being um, very joyful and confident and uh, having joy and hope for the future with regard to this combination of gifts. And then she says, the taxi is bright yellow. I'm liking this dream more and more because of all the colours. So yellow has to do with our intellect. It's a colour for the intellect in dreams, really. And uh, so it can signify, the shade of yellow can signify whether we have irrational fears, if it's kind of a mustardy yellow, or whether we have an enlightened intellect, if it's a bright yellow, which is what the dreamer says here. So the dream is telling the dreamer that she has a choice in the way she looks at things. She can look with her enlightened intellect at things uh, or not. Um, just taking the back seat and then what it's she says but it has a strip of checkered black and white on the on the taxi cab which we would see in taxi cabs but the fact that she points it out um, is significant and then she says we are driving around in circles and circles driving around in circles has to do with being stuck on the karmic path in a dream Uh, you know not really getting anywhere going around a ferris wheel is another really good symbol for that Um, so doing things to get places, but still getting nowhere. Uh, and then she says, which is interesting too, there is Indian music playing in the background of this dream. And Indian music is also uh, to do with karma. 
And these are things I wrote a book in 2007 called How to Interpret Your Dreams. And you can look these up and they're in the book uh, saying they both are about karma and so on and the meanings for yellow. So it's uh, it's interesting to see these when you get them in this way. So why the black and white checkered strip? Heidi, over to you. I'm putting Heidi on the spot on purpose. <laughs> That's where the silence comes in. <laughs> um, so is it black and white? What I'm picking up, it's black and white thinking about being on the karmic path, is it? Um, well, it's, it's, I'd say it would be more about using the combination of gifts. Um, you know, th- this dreamer is on the karmic path deliberately. Most of us want to get off it. This dreamer is on yeah. it for a reason um, because it's, it suits her goals in life. So it's kind of interesting it's in that it's unique in that way. Um, but yeah, it could very well be. But that's something you could easily ask the dreamer. Do you have an issue with being on the karmic path? Do you want to get off the karmic or path? Or just even a thought about it. Um, well, that's what I was hearing. So it, it's black and white about how does the dreamer think that she can't use them all together? It's it's exactly that. It's it's the combination of gifts are what the dreamer brought with her. But the black and white view is this isn't necessarily the, what is going to help me go forward in life mm-hmm. um, uh, when in reality it is. And of course, this is an old dream, so it's important to say. So it's no longer relevant for the dreamer. So you can have something that is um, crossing your mind and it's just crossing your mind for a, a period of time, a few days, and then you're going to have dreams about it. And, and so dreams have a sell-by date. If you look at an old dream, it, is, it makes no sense to do that a lot of the time. What's good here is you can say, okay, from this dream, you uh, have these three abilities. You're a psychic, you're a healer, and you're a counselor. And uh, that doesn't change. But the, having the issues with using those uh, or not putting the counseling skill forward um, is, is probably no longer an issue for the dreamer. But because of the black and white, we want to include it in today's show. And did you want to do another dream? Yeah, let's do, let's do one more. Okay, so um, there's a few here. Uh, the wedding book, this one is called. There has been a wedding the day before, perhaps my sister's wedding. There was a large hardcover book, easily four inches thick. So the hardcover and the four inches are, are both limitations. Um, uh, we did numbers a while ago on the show. Uh, f- anyway, it's full of wedding guests who were invited. Each entry included a small black and white headshot photo, like a yearbook with their name, a description of what they wore and another piece of info. So the black and white headshot, again, this is saying the dreamer is looking at something in an intellectual way, and you know, using her head, not uh, using her heart. And um, then the black and white way is, is also saying look at it, looking at it in a limited way. And we get where the limitation comes from in a second here. She says, um, just making sure I'm not skipping anything. She says, my dream mother, who was going through the book and following up with some of the people who had become ill at the last minute and weren't able to attend. So when we see mother showing up in the dream and it doesn't have to be her own mom, we know that the dreamer has picked, uh, has an old fashioned way of looking at things or a black and white way of looking at things that she's picked up from her mom that she needs to overcome. And um, so how would this show up? It'd be kind of like, this person's good for me uh, and this person's bad for me rather than this person could have good advice sometimes and this other person could have good advice sometimes. You know, so you're, you're either in the pigeonhole of always give good advice or always gives bad advice. And that's not true for most people. You know, we can all have off days or whatever. Um, but uh, anyway, we know where it comes from with the dreamer. So this is something that she needs to work on. Um, and again, if it's an old dream, it's already done. And of course, if it's an old dream or if it's a current dream, you look at what was going through your mind right now because it's a comment on that. And it's saying that this thing that you were considering uh, that you were looking at uh, is what's being influenced by the issues with your mom. Um, And a lot of the time when we know how specific it is, we can say, "Okay, well, then what would I do if I didn't have that influence? And and we can step back quite easily and just do the right thing. Uh, There was a group of women in the book, best friends. The The dress descriptions note that the gowns were made of Promity, which I know is something like tool, which I don't know what that is. <laughs> tool. What what is that? Anybody know? It's it's a fabric. You see it in like old prom dresses and stuff. It's it's kind of like a very fine netting. No, I don't. I don't <laughs> you see you that would know it if you saw it. Dresses. We don't even have probs in Ireland. 
Um, anyway, I'm sure you have tool though. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the women all wore gowns like debutantes. It might have taken place in the 60s because the women her, women's hairstyles seem to be of that era. So even if you just had that last bit of the dream, hairstyles uh, from an old era, it's saying your way of thinking or your black and white thinking with regard to whatever the subject matter was about, which was something that was going on at the time, uh, is heavily influenced by your mom. And, uh, and that's what it's about. Yeah, So for sure. do you want to say in, in just a few words what black and white mean black in a dream white, as a symbol when black, they c- yes, come up together? Yeah, it signifies an intolerance, an extremism, a judge a judgmental immaturity, you know, that you see things as black and white. Like if you're if you're not my friend, you're my enemy. So if one of your friends uh, is suddenly hanging around somebody you really don't like, then you would say, OK, you're not my friend anymore. You know, that extremist, crazy way of looking at things. And of course, we rarely meet people who have that in every walk of life. But we sometimes, you know, you may know somebody who does have it. But we can have it in an area of our life and not realize we have it in an area. And then the dreams can say, look, you have that way of looking at this particular subject matter. So watch out for that. Um, So does that explain it? Yep. Yeah. So it's fear. Like white has to do with perfectionism, confidence, hope, enlightenment and all those things. And then black has to do with fear and negativity. So it's 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 uh, the opposite of all those things. Yeah. So the black and white is terrible. Anyway. um, So your piece on black and white. Can we segue straight into that then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, so black and white thinking, sometimes called dichotomous thinking, um, it's like you said, it's seeing things as all good or all bad. And it's when we lump like the whole world or an entire spectrum of, of people or events um, into one big generalization. And when we do this, um, it, it adds to our stress level and it can also make us feel kind of overwhelmed. I was talking to a client a few years back, and um, she was saying, everyone I know is in chaos right now. And so I asked her, is that really true, everyone? And so she took a minute, and she was like, oh, no, not, not everyone. Actually, just these, these specific people. And like, as soon as she was able to name, to change the way she was talking about it and change the way she was thinking about it, like her stress level came down immediately. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's pretty common, I think, for all of us to do this, especially when we're under stress. Um, but for some people, it's more it's more per- pervasive. It's a, a bigger habit, a thinking habit. So I think I'm guilty of it when I'm under stress, for sure. Uh huh. I catch myself for sure. <laughs> and I know you are, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Heidi knows that when she stresses me, I. I, I get that and way. you say. All people suck. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see, that's not even, uh, that's not Irish either. So I would never say that. <laughs> so when we generalize like that, we also, we miss like the complexity and subtlety in situations and we can't see, we can't see other people's perspective or that there might be well, we more ha- than one we way of doing We have this things. self-fulfilling prophecy, you know, we look for what we expect. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it's like your, your client. Uh, you look for people in chaos and you go, yep, another one. Yeah. Even though you might have passed seven who aren't. You right. Go, I've counted three. Right, but right. But you didn't count the other seven. It's like when celebrities die and then you start counting up all the, you go back as far as you need to to get three. So, <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah. that superstition about, <laughs> maybe you don't know that one. No, I don't have okay. that one. I have all other right. ones <laughs> that are worse, I'm sure. Okay. So the other thing about black and white thinking is it can really stress our relationships because like if I have the idea that there's one way of doing things and that's the right way and no other way is the right way, then <laughs> if, if, if you try to help me with something or if I ask you to do something, I'm just going to be frustrated with you because you're not doing it my way, which is the only way in my mind. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very hard on, on our relationships too. So, um, and it's also associated with perfectionism and issues around perfectionism, like, um, you know, a lot of us grew up with, well, not a lot, but some of us grew up with, like, if you, if you can't do it right, don't do it at all. And when we have that kind of attitude, then it's like, there's no point in even starting something. And even if we have really good intentions about embarking on something new, 
it's really hard to actually get going with it because it's like, it's like, well, if I can't do it absolutely right the very first time I do it, then there's no point. Mm. And, and if I didn't get everything right when I did it, then it was an utter failure. White alone in a dream is, signifies that. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, there's, a, there's an old story. You probably know this about the farmer and his son. So the farmer had a horse, and um, one day the son was trying to break the horse. Uh, and he threw off the, the farmer's son, and the boy broke his arm. And then all the people in the town were like, oh, this is terrible. But the farmer just shrugged his shoulders and said, is it good or is it bad? And pretty soon after this, some men from the army came to the town, and they were drafting all the young men who were able to fight. But they didn't take this farmer's son because he had a broken arm. And then the people in the town were like, you are so lucky that they didn't take your son. It, it's a good thing that his arm was broken. And the farmer says, is it good or is it bad? See, I already want to shoot that farmer. <laughs> <laughs> it's annoying me. <laughs> so, so then the farmer's horse uh, got out of the field and ran away. And the people said, oh, this is terrible. This is awful. But the farmer again says. Wait, did he say, <laughs> is it good or is it bad? Yep, I'm almost done. So then the next day, the farmer's horse comes back, but now he's brought with him a whole herd of wild horses. Could you pause till I go get a revolver? <laughs> <laughs> Did you? So the people in the town are like, this is, this is fantastic. This is so lucky. This is great. So I won't tell you what the farmer said. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, like, there are very few things in our lives that are strictly good or bad. And even when we look back at things in our life that have been super challenging, things that we never would have chosen for ourselves, that's often when our significant growth happens. And yeah, so, absolutely. right. So like positive things can come out of even, you know, pretty miserable circumstances. The more shaken up you are, the more likely you are to change. Yeah. Yeah. So something that is perceived as bad, of course, can be the best thing that ever happened to you, even though you felt bad in the moment. Yeah, and even though it looks bad to all your friends and family, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so judging things as good or bad, it's really an oversimplification, and it's, it's not really accurate. So, okay, oh, so given that black and white thinking, it's, it's, um, it's not really an accurate way of perceiving reality, and it takes a toll on our health, on our mental health, it takes a toll on our relationships and our productivity. So what do we do to catch it and to change it? So the first thing is um, to notice what you're saying to yourself, and especially if you're feeling stressed. And um, I like to particularly for myself look for the words like everything or everyone or always or never or nobody, um, even good and bad, are signs to me that I've made a huge generalization. So is this a problem with being a counselor that you're constantly, you have Jiminy Cricket working on your shoulder there? Yes. <laughs> it's not a problem though, actually. I mean, I'm... Is it good or bad? I'm, <laughs> I'm much happier than I used to be, actually. <laughs> I'm sure it's both in some ways. <laughs> Got one on each shoulder. Yeah. Um, so, and then when you notice that you're making a generalization or a judgment, then asking yourself, is that really true? And see if you can get more accurate and, and more specific. Like with my client, like it was actually just a few people that she knew. So, and the problem with seeing things in a black and white way is that if you, have, if you want to change your way of thinking, because something is either right or wrong, then to take on something new, a new way of thinking, a lot of most of us will, will kind of have two conflicting ideas in our heads. And we mull them over for a while and then the dust will settle and we, we will lean in the direction of one. But we haven't completely ruled out the other because we don't know. Um, but somebody who sees things as black, as black and white, they can't do that. They can't let go of something. They can't take on something new until they've completely eliminated the old idea. And that's really hard. That's where a lot of the hard toll comes from. And when you've got that way of thinking, if I see it, they're the worst people to do dreams for because they disagree with you. Because uh -huh. they see it a certain way and you go, well, you know, here's the way to look at it. And they're like, nope, you're wrong. 
And uh, so I, I dread it when I see black and white coming up in a dream because you know that the person already has a limited way of looking at that particular subject matter. Um, and quite often, if I see those in a dream, I look for problems with elimination because that difficulty with eliminating psychological things um, mirrors in the body. I mean, it's kind of funny how everything mirrors everything else. You know, whatever, yeah. how we think is mirrored in how our body acts. You look at reflexology, a reflexologist can tell you what's going on with your body just by looking at your foot. A neurodologist just by looking at your eye. Um, doctors we know uh, have all sorts of other techniques where they, they look at different parts of your body and they can tell. So you know, we're, we're really um, the same pattern repeated over and over and over again and with the hopes that we will spot that pattern uh, in some possible way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very true. Very true. All right. We're so, going to take a break. Sure. And we will be back with you in a moment. Hi, I'm Michael Sheridan, and I'm here to tell you about my new book. In 1990, I had a spontaneous awakening, and the veil between the physical world and the spirit world was lifted for me. I didn't believe in the spirit world, but that no longer mattered. I was looking at it. My new site didn't give me answers, but it opened my mind enough to begin asking questions. It would ultimately lead me to discover that the spirit world is always involved in everything we do. My book reveals what I learned about the spirit world as I stumbled through my journey and is titled My Journey to Awakening and is now available on Amazon for Kindle and in paperback. My Journey to Awakening by Michael Sheridan. How clear is your vision for your life? Are you living on purpose, bringing your dreams to reality? I can help you to hear the quiet voice of your heart, guiding you in the right direction. I'm Susan Pullen with True Radiance Healing Arts. Let's talk about how you can create the life you want and be the person you were born to be. Contact me today at true-radiance.com. Hello, this is Heidi. How can I help you? You tell me. You're the psychic. That's not how it works. I am a medium. I connect to your spirit guides and loved ones and pass on their messages to you. So why did I call? Use the force, Heidi. Look, I can get answers to any questions you ask. That's not a problem. They can be about anything. Relationships, career, children, finances, anything. Anything? Okay. What's my favorite color? Dave, your mom says you're being childish. For readings with Heidi, go to angelsontheline.com. Talk radio with a difference. Alternative Talk, 1150 AM. Welcome back to So You Think You're Awake with Michael Sheridan, Heidi Brook and Susan Pullen. Our phone number is 425-373-5527. And we have April on the line. So we say hello to April. You have a dream. Hello. How are you? Good. Um, I I have a dream and it's not... It's pretty short, but I should probably give you a little bit of uh, intro. I had this dream last night, and before I went to bed, you guys have analyzed enough dreams for me that you know that um, judgment comes up, um, self-judgment and and judging situations, that black and white thinking a bit. Um, So a lot of dreams tell me that I'm close to, that that I need to allow and let things be, and not judge them, just allow just, even if it's even if it feels bad, I just allow it. So I've really been on board with trying to do that, and I notice that I get um, triggered by certain things, and I'm I'm just certain that there are just a little bit more buried things to do with mom in there. So um, I had a conversation with my dad yesterday, and he told me a story about something that happened when I was young, where something that my mom did that was that was hurtful. And uh, it made me very sad for him to tell me that. So last night when everyone went to bed, I I wanted to try to experience that feeling of, of sadness to try to, to get it out, like like you say you should do when you're cutting the ties. So I did something stupid. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I went on YouTube and I looked for a video of of um, of, of children being eaten. And, and I found one and it destroyed me. It was so awful and so sad that um, that I definitely re-experienced a lot of traumatic feelings. So last night I had this dream okay. after that. And, and, and it was good in that I was able to channel some information and try to figure out 
why I had that, that experience and what I could learn from it and, and all that. So last night I dreamt that um, there were two people, a male and a female, had been forced to take pills. And these pills created a feeling of not complacency. It's not like they were unfeeling when they were on these pills, but it, it created a state that if they fought against the nature of the pill, it created chest pain. So they had like this, they could only think a certain way or, it, you know, it, it was almost like they were, they were trapped, but they were trying to force me to take the pills or someone was trying to get them to give me the pills. And I was on a houseboat and the female left and she came back and she pressed two or three pills into my right hand and um, it hurt and it was hot and I screamed and I took the pills to the front porch of the houseboat and I threw them on the ground and they fell through the cracks. It was almost like the front porch was a dock with cracks in it. Um, so I threw these pills through the crack um, so I would take them and I considered jumping in the water and swimming in a circle around the boat to get away from these people that were trying to get me to take the pills. And when I woke up and I wrote down the dream, um, I was certain it was about what I did last night, but I didn't know whether I should have taken the pills in the dream or whether I shouldn't have. No, I was, I was, you no. shouldn't have taken the pills. So you did the right thing. And um, it's really good that you did that. So whatever the reasons and, and everything else leading up to it, but the fact that, uh, so what you're saying in, in the dream is, no, I'm not going to conform. And of course, it's not, life is not about conforming. It's about discovering yourself and, and, and being your true nature. So the fact that you didn't take the pills and didn't conform uh, is is good. Um, and the woman going away and coming back, um, you know, that's that can be about your female side. And uh, so the, the, the biggest, the bigger influence in you for making you conform would be your female side or your mom issues with your mom. So, okay. um, yeah, so, I mean, it's, you, you've done it yourself and you said, I mean, you've analyzed it yourself, but you said you channeled on it too afterwards, did you? I didn't channel on the dream. I channeled last night. I was trying to figure out, I, well, I was, <laughs> I was like, why did, I didn't know if, if watching the video and try to re-experience the feeling through letting someone else's experience trigger it within me and then try to analyze the feelings from someone else's. Well, you already, you didn't have the, an image of that. So if you had an image of a children being beaten or you've been beaten as a child, then we could easily say what you watched influenced that. So we have to ignore it in this dream. Because yes, you're going to dream about the things that, that um, you push on yourself that day. No question about it. But right. this, this is quite different. Um, so it's saying that you're here, you're here as a spiritual person. You're on a houseboat, which is in the water. So... It's it's all about you. Be, you're here to be a spiritual person, and that's all about freedom and and ability to go whenever wherever you want to go. Like think about where a, a, a boat doesn't have to follow roads; it's uh, uh, it goes whatever path it wants to go. So, or you want to take it. So it's all good that way. What age were the people in the dream? Were the oh the chest pains? The chest. So they they get chest pains if they. So it's saying uh, the conforming affects your heart. So you want to. Um, it's all about f feelings and expressing your feelings and being true to your heart. So um, it, you saying no to the pills is, is healing for that. It's also probably healing for kidneys if you have any kidney issues there. Do you get that notes on it, Heidi? Just about the port. So uh, that is a symbol for reproductive system again. Isn't yeah, it? And, and you, I, you have that in your yeah, dreams. Yeah, and that's a healing. It's, oh. They're telling me that it's a healing thing and it, it is related to this conforming um, way of thinking that you did have or that you're shedding now. Um, so, okay. Because they're showing the cracks on the porch and they immediately reminded me of that, but they're saying that this is beginning to heal now. But okay. the, these aren't uh, cracks that aren't meant to be there, are they? It's it's like the I took it that the this part of the boat has these holes on purpose. Is, was it, am I right? Uh, I, my family actually has a boat, it, but it, the porch doesn't have cracks in it. In reality, it, the porch was it, it was like a dock. It, it had cracks like a dock would. It wasn't like the boat was. So they're um, not meant to be there. The cracks that aren't meant to be there. They're um, not there in reality, but in the dream, it didn't seem odd that they were there. Okay. So just what I was told is that it's yeah, yeah, healing part. So the Heidi's dream. right in that. So that's really good. Um, you reminded me another part in the dream that I there were 
I, there were plastic bags underwater. It was just a very short part. Plastic bags underwater, and the water, and inside the bag were, were bottles that used to have oil in them. That used to have oil in them? Yeah, which, which means blood, right? <laughs> so, like, that could be reproductive. This is their little, they look like olive oil bottles, like in, in restaurants, little tiny little olive oil bottles, but they were the. the oil yeah, oil olive oil. Well, because of the, uh, the word um, live in that, it's, it's, a, it's a common thing you see in dreams. It, it's really a, a pick you up, uh, encouraging you to, to live your life to the fullest. And uh, so, so they're a good symbol in the dream. The plastic isn't, though. So right. the plastic would be don't, uh, I don't know if it's about diet. I mean, what's your diet like? Is your diet okay? Most I've people, been trying, I've, I've just in the last few days, I've, I've been deciding that I need to eat better, okay. more, more elimination friendly foods. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you've got it in hand. And of course, if you're deciding you want to eat better because you want to have more energy in life or whatever the reason, then the olive uh, fits in there for that too. Okay. Um, because you're doing it uh, to enhance that. But yeah, it's so perfect thing to do in the dream, but I wouldn't recommend doing what you did <laughs> to, for anyone. Cause I never, I, I can't, do, you know what, when I watch movies, if there's a baby or a toddler being hurt or there's a, like my partner likes to show Game of Thrones and I have to be on the other side of the house. I can't, <laughs> there's, that show is so violent and it just hurts me so much. So forcing myself to watch that video was, I, I I think it was traumatic, and I, I definitely won't do it again. But if, <laughs> if the dream is telling me that it it wasn't a terrible idea, then then I can. Well, but it a you know, bit. there's nothing in that dream that says it's connected to what you did earlier, uh, because okay. it doesn't. There was no children in the dream. It was bringing you back. Well, you said it was docked, so it can be bringing you back to birth there, because that that's a pun. Uh, ship boats birth at a dock, so. Yeah, but you definitely shouldn't do that. And the reason they say is because that's somebody else's experience, and you're very empathetic anyway. And you would pick up th their experience, and it wouldn't necessarily be your experience that you were picking up from that video. Even though you were right. trying to relate it, you were trying to make it part of you. But that's not something you necessarily have to deal with. Is you don't necessarily have to deal with their experience of it. Yeah, what you could do, although again, only if you're in the process doing a therapy. So really, you don't do anything like this unless you're doing a therapy. But if you're cutting the ties with your mom, for instance, then you could meditate on going back to your childhood and trying to bring up a memory that somebody has told you about. Um, but only if it's going to be therapeutic, if it's going to allow you express a trapped sadness, for instance. But yeah. otherwise, uh, I was no. I was trying to cheat and skip meditation and just get the feeling from. <laughs> From yeah. um, a similar feeling. So yeah, no, I understand what you're trying to do. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, bad idea. Logically makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate all your right. help. Thanks for that. So we have uh, Lily on the line as well. Hi, Lily. You have a dream? Yes. How are you doing this afternoon? Very good. Thanks for calling. All right. Uh, this dream is about, uh, and I don't know which leg, I can't tell you. I pulled a nail out of my leg during my dream, about four inches. My father was standing around, some people were standing around, and I said, do I go to emergency room? Am I sick? What's going on? No one responded, nothing at all. There was no bleeding, no nothing. And then when I woke up, again, I don't know which leg, one of my legs had like a, a Charlie horse in it. And then that pain went away, uh, and that was it. Okay, quite interesting. Um, so we can work into our dreams what's going on in in our bodies. Um, I, I know it, it happens. I hear it a lot, but it, it, I've also had that experience. If somebody's ringing the doorbell, if you take a nap during the day, then you can have uh, an alarm going off in your dream or, you know, that sound works into your dream and it doesn't wake you up. So it's very likely then that the Charlie horse uh, caused you to have that dream uh, where you're getting the, you know, something sticking in your leg and then nobody doing anything about it. But what I would look at is the fact that you didn't get support from your dad, that's the that's the critical thing in that dream. So we can link it to the physical experience. Uh, but what would your dad be like in reality? Would he support you when you've got uh, difficulty or wanting to do something? OK, I had to do it myself. I had to pull the nail out myself and people were around me. But he I remember him. There were other people, but no one spoke. No one came to my rescue or no one gave me I, I asked questions in the dream is this is it serious is this and you know, all these questions came out there was no answer and I just kept pulling it out and I pulled it out and there was no bleeding and then like I said there was a pain and then it went away okay so 
you still look at it and you say, what was your relationship with dad like? Did dad support you with regard to something that maybe you're, you're thinking about that's been on your mind lately, but it could be something from way back? Or did he just generally support you and believe in you? By support, I mean, like, believe in you and say, you know, whatever you want to do in life, you can do. Um, or was it more like, you know, I, I, um, I don't believe that you doing what you're saying you want to do in college is the right thing or whatever it happens to be. You yeah. need to be doing this. So that's what that dream would be addressing is the lack of support from from those around you. And even though your dad's only there, uh, there can be two reasons for this. One is somebody else could be denying you what you want uh, wanted to do and your dad didn't step in and say no let her do it uh, you know okay. so that's that's where that okay. dream is pushing even though it's short it's it's very um, it's very succinct and, and really hitting the nail on the head to, to go along with your own pun but you, normally you see nails um, in dreams they're, they're about denial and uh, repression of, of something specific something very well. specific Okay, so the bleeding, not having any bleeding and having to do it myself. I the mean, not having the bleeding is good, um, yeah. but having to do it yourself is, you know, fits in with the lack of support. Um, so it could say that you're a very independent person now because of the fact that you didn't, uh, like you would get something you wanted to do young, uh, earlier in life, you didn't get the help and support for doing that. So it caused you to be independent. We don't know, there's not enough in the dream, but that's something right. you'll know for certain yourself. But because it comes up in the dream, it's saying it's an issue that is worth looking at because um, this not feeling supported can cause you maybe not to to do things that, you know, you should be doing in your life. And, and then I was fine. I mean, I had one, one pain and then it went away and I was fine. I mean, I was, I was fine after that. So, yeah. okay. Sounds uh, good. I just wanted to ask someone that question. I asked other people, they're like, what? And then <laughs> I'm, I'm calling you and you give me an answer. So I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Lily. Right. Okay, take care. Bye. All right, we will uh, take a break. Be back with you in a moment. How clear is your vision for your life? Are you living on purpose, bringing your dreams to reality? I can help you to hear the quiet voice of your heart, guiding you in the right direction. I'm Susan Pullen with True Radiance Healing Arts. Let's talk about how you can create the life you want and be the person you were born to be. Contact me today at true-radiance.com. Hello, this is Heidi. How can I help you? You tell me. You're the psychic. That's not how it works. I am a medium. I connect to your spirit guides and loved ones and pass on their messages to you. So why did I call? Use the force, Heidi. Look, I can get answers to any questions you ask. That's not a problem. They can be about anything. Relationships, career, children, finances, anything. Anything? Okay. What's my favorite color? Dave, your mom says you're being childish. For readings with Heidi, go to angelsontheline.com. Hi, I'm Michael Sheridan, and I'm here to tell you about my new book. In 1990, I had a spontaneous awakening, and the veil between the physical world and the spirit world was lifted for me. I didn't believe in the spirit world, but that no longer mattered. I was looking at it. My new site didn't give me answers, but it opened my mind enough to begin asking questions. It would ultimately lead me to discover that the spirit world is always involved in everything we do. My book reveals what I learned about the spirit world as I stumbled through my journey, and is titled My Journey to Awakening, and is now available on Amazon for Kindle and in paperback. My Journey to Awakening by Michael Sheridan. Get current weather, traffic, and news. Visit 1150kknw.com and stay informed with Alternative Talk 1150 AM. Welcome back to So You Think You're Awake with Michael Sheridan, Heidi Brook, and Susan Pullen. Our show is about dreams, guidance, and healing. And uh, we'll have a look at a quick few dreams. Uh, Lady says, I was seven years old, had just escaped from a house where I had been held captive. I found myself in a cul-de-sac. You use that word here, don't you? Yes. Um, I had to pick a house to run to the back garden to play and be free. I had to choose between house eight or nine. I chose eight. So this dream obviously is bringing the dreamer back to her childhood and saying she needs to look at issues that happened around eight or nine because that's what's going to enable her to be free. Now, of course, we know it's going back to the past because of the eight or nine, but also the back garden is telling her go to the past. Um, So 
up until that point, she was free. Something happened around that, that age and uh, she needs to look at that and that's going to free her up. Now, that's an important thing. Dreams bring, bring us to uh, help us face our fears or something that went on in our lives so that we, we can deal with that issue and be free from it. Uh, you know, we don't have dreams that say, hey, here are all, here are all the good things about yourself. They tend to pick, we, you could have a hundred positive traits and one bad one and you're going to dream about the bad one because the dreams are saying, this is, this is how you're going to improve yourself. So every single dream is coming to you saying, you can improve yourself by doing this. So it's, you know, it's not that we all have lots and lots of problems to deal with, but our dreams are going to pick things for us to deal with. So another short one. Uh, last night I dreamed I was in my house and when I looked out the window, there was a big snake on the branch. I remember feeling fear. Then the snake went and disappeared under my porch. What does this mean? It's been freaking me out. Well, it would freak me out too. Um, so the, the dream is pointing at a problem with the reproductive system, most likely fallopian tube. And if I was you, I would get a checkup. So, um, I mean, easy enough thing to do. Ease your mind. Uh, it's really, it's more if you have that type of dream over and over and over and over that it points to actually a physical problem. Uh, so here what you would expect is if it's just a once off uh, then you know getting a check up everything will be fine and the doctor will probably tell you things you need to do to stay healthy and so on but, but that's what you're looking at in this dream um, but the snake makes it something that you have to deal with uh, so uh, let's have a look I'll skip that one um, here we go uh, I wanted to call into the show you mentioned that dreams of actors mean we have a channeling ability I had a dream that I was in a house where a movie star had died her husband was on the bottom floor and her little child, about age two, was on the middle floor. So anyway, uh, a movie star in a dream is about channeling. The number two is about channeling. Um, so uh, we also have top and bottom floors. Yeah, we'll skip that bit, but it's, it's also about connecting with your higher self. I also had a dream about a man in a wheelchair with a tracheotomy. Um, and I didn't point that out in the previous dream. We had the, the women who were ill or disabled. So a man in a wheelchair. So... Men and women represents, uh, represent our different aspects of our nature, male and female aspects. And we get different traits through the different aspects, but we all have male and female aspects. Um, and a man or a woman being shown as disabled or ill is a classic way for a dream to show uh, that we have uh, pr issues with one of our aspects that we need to tend to. Anyway, um, so this dream is saying, look, you need to deal with this. Um, so would this mean that the, she asks, would this dream that the channeling ability has actually died or is simply being censored, which I've recently experienced due to disagreement with my beliefs? Now, she doesn't say what her, her beliefs are, but no, you can't lose an ability. That's impossible. So we practice our abilities before we come here. They're not generally anything to do with our physical bodies. So you would have trained uh, to be a channel before getting here. You have a channeling ability and it's always yours to claim and your dreams are always going to encourage you to use it. So your dream could say, look, you're killing off your channeling ability by not using it. And that would be fine. But it doesn't mean you're going. To, it's gone forever. Um, so the dream, because you're having this dream about channeling, it's, it, your higher self is saying, we do not want you to give up on this. This is really important. Um, and But the, the belief system. And then uh, the reason I picked that dream is because the same dreamer, uh, in fact, a month apart to the day, on May 7th, sent this dream. And she said... Uh, um, I'm looking for the start of it. In my, one of my dreams, my friend at a community college, uh, I went to a community college to watch him play. We went to the restroom and after walking down several stairs, came upon a free one. Uh, my friend went in while I waited a long time for her. I finally asked her what was taking so long. She was in a stall helping a Muslim woman in a burqa. I wondered if we should call campus protection. We had already missed the first part of the play. And her next dream, uh, which is presumably the same night in another dream. I was at my old elementary school trying to get up to the upper floor. And remember the very first dream I read, we had top floor and bottom floor um, by climbing onto the floor. When I discovered the stairs, I wondered why I had not used the stairs. I no noticed that the teacher in the school was a Muslim woman in a burqa. So the question is this. This is what she says. The question is this. Is the woman in in the burqa a guide since she's a teacher um, in the first dream? It seems I should eliminate that element of myself since she's in the bathroom. What you need to eliminate is your religious indoctrination. You have to overcome your religious indoctrination. Um, and that's what the 
you even said in the first dream, you, uh, the first dream you said that was your comment. Um, but here we can see it in reality. Um, knowing you, I know uh, you're not a Muslim. And the fact that you're wondering, should you call uh, campus protection um, because you see a Muslim woman in a burqa? It's saying that don't hide behind, don't hide yourself behind your uh, religious indoctrination or don't let it hide you. I don't know which way to say it, but probably don't let your religion hide you because of the fact that women um, in Muslim countries, some Muslim countries, are forced to wear the burqa. Um, And I'm also picking up, Michael, that this streamer kind of wants to lose the channeling ability. Like, she doesn't want that responsibility in a way. Yeah. And you can't lose it and you can't disown the responsibility of it. No, no. Either. Um, it's a gift. It's a really positive thing. And it, it, you can't make it a negative thing because you because your beliefs would tell you otherwise. It doesn't make it a negative thing. That's a perfect example of black and white, is it not? Which mm-hmm. is why we picked the, that particular one, because um, even though she doesn't have the black and white in it, um, she doesn't say the color of the burqa or anything like that. But yes, that's something that gives her a black and white attitude towards the subject matter, which is a shame, you know. And you do see that a lot. And we get that reaction uh, a lot when you say what dreams are about if they have spiritual abilities. But I've had um, ex-priests do my course and I've had nuns who are still uh, in Catholic nuns who were still in the convent do my course and then even do channeling courses that we did. So, it you know, the spiritual work does not contradict a religion. Um, it, it just doesn't happen that way. Now, religions can try contradict uh, things that are of a spiritual nature, like... Um, Only people that are running, currently running organized religions yes, comment on yeah. this kind of thing as being not accurate or not something you should do. Yeah. Texts and scriptures of anything, they don't generally comment on that you shouldn't try and... Uh, learn anything or grow spiritually in other areas. No, quite the opposite. And even in the Bible, um, Jesus says uh, that many people have the same abilities he has and some have them even stronger. And that's his words in the Bible. But yet people will still say, well, what I'm saying is more important, to which I would say uh, that's crazy. Anyway, uh, but it's something growing up in a Catholic country, um, very strong Catholic upbringing. Everybody was religious when I was uh, a kid. We uh, all were dragged to mass every Sunday, all that sort of thing. Um, I went to a Christian brother school taught uh, by Christian brothers, even taught evolution by Christian brothers. But they were a very open school. And um, but it was still something I had to overcome myself when I started getting into spiritual things. So it's something I can completely understand. And for me, it was a struggle that lasted a few years. So uh, it's not an easy one, but it is it's something that when you work through it, you get stronger because of it. So uh, I wouldn't give up on it just because of those dreams. Um, and it's it's absolutely normal. And in fact, you you tend to hit these things that shake your faith uh, in order that you look at it all again, reevaluate everything and uh, get stronger uh, because of it. OK, um, so let's have a look at some other ones. Yeah, there's here's a few I wanted to do. This person uh, we have said before is having dream after dream about getting pregnant. And uh, I should just. Do I have these here? Yeah. So let's just read out some of the titles without looking at the dreams. Here's one called The Eggman. So The Eggman is going to be about ovaries and eggs. Uh, Planting sunflowers, another symbol for um, having a child. Potted plants. You can find that in the dictionary uh, because we have to tend and and nurture them. Um, Then what have I've got these out of order. Canaries in the orchard. So we have orchards and she has many dreams about orchards. Here's another one. um, The peach orchard. So uh, orchards, uh, fruit are the ripened ovum of a plant. So uh, they are the re- they actually are the reproductive system of the plant. So we have the peach orchard, then we have canaries in the orchard. orchard, And then we have uh, one called Archangel Gabriel in Bethlehem. And I've redone my course because I have uh, a new online course um, that is fantastic and great and everything. And uh, I'm allowed to say that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I took off the slide, the uh, Archangel Gabriel. I've had a, on the... Re- the the slides about reproductive system, I've had Archangel Gabriel uh, for years there because Archangel Gabriel is the angel that told Mary she was pregnant with Jesus. So symbolizes pregnancy in a dream. So here I am. I took it off about three weeks ago and then somebody sends in a dream with the Archangel Gabriel. Same dreamer. So we know for a fact you are being encouraged. Um, did we want to do some of those dreams? Uh, then the next one was the garden, wasn't it? Uh, not re- that isn't about oh yes yes it is indeed it is indeed um, which is also of course a symbol 
So well, let's have a look at the garden one. Um, I think of I think there's a mosquito flying in front of me, but when I take a closer look, I see it's a tiny fairy. So tiny little person uh, in your life. She has a blue dress on and has blue and silver pink wings. Um, she ma- motions for me to follow her. She leads me to a garden. It is very, very well cared for and the flowers are planted in such a way that if you were to take an aerial photograph, you would see all kinds of geometric shapes. This dreamer has had this before. Um, the fairy leads me to the centre of the garden where there is a fountain. There is a bench near the fountain. I sit down and look at the water. So this is saying that you've got the message that you're to have a child, but you're sitting on the message. Is that what you're saying, Heidi? Um, but yeah, uh, we could pick any of these. Some of them are funny. Uh, just, I don't mean funny, peculiar, just it, it's funny how you can have so many dreams. And this is what I was saying before. You look for the consistency in the dreams, but so many dreams over a period of time uh, to say that this is, is something you should do. Um, but I might do the Archangel one if we have time later, but I know we won't. Uh, there was one particular other one I wanted to find, but uh, in case I forget it later, you have a course coming up um, and, and two, two versions. You've got something on Wednesdays for people who can't attend a weekend workshop and then you have something on the weekend as well. Yeah, yeah. So this weekend I have the Living Your Life Purpose workshop um, about discovering your life purpose and, and putting it into, um, bringing it into action <laughs> in your life. And then uh, next Wednesday I have a women's circle, a spiritual development um discovering your spiritual gifts and um, putting those into practice a five week series Wednesday mornings. So those are both on my website at true dash radiance.com. And have you found that dream yet? Uh, no, but I remember the bit I liked about it. So <laughs> I don't know why I can't find it, but um, we've had this before. This dreamer can send us really short dreams. She had a dream where um, she had a herd of horses in a park or in a grass field. And it's, even when I see that, I was like, oh, that's so short. What could we possibly get out of that? And it's a dream that's healing for our heart because we have the, the green grass is the heart and circulatory system. Indeed, an open field is the, is the heart and circulatory system. And then horses are symbolize uh, spiritual healing because of the power. Any symbol to do with power or energy uh, indicates that you're a spiritual healer. So she's a spiritual healer. So she's using her own spiritual healing in her dream to heal her heart and circulatory system. And then she sent in a dream yesterday where she was taking a gold leaf off a tree and as part of the ceremony, you had to put the gold leaf over your heart. And gold in a dream is the color of the sun, another, the, the biggest energy symbol we can have. And that is also about spiritual healings. And uh, she's directly putting it over her heart in her dream to heal her heart. So um, very good. Anyway, so I couldn't find it. But there you go. Have it anyway. Um, so let's have a look at another dream. Um, both my parents have passed away within the last year and a half. The last four months, I'd be dreaming of my mother three to four times a week. In every dream, she is dying, not slowly dying uh, like she was before her death, but a fast cardiac arrest type, never the same death either. But she always dies in my dreams. Um, what can that be about? And uh, I got you to channel on this one, Heidi, and it's to do with denial of female side causing issues with your heart. And uh, Heidi's looking at me puzzled, but sometimes I hold these for weeks. <laughs> But it's uh, the reason it's that is, OK, yeah. And this is where we can get too close to this, the subject matter of the dream because, you know, the dreamer's mother did die. Um, but it's about her female side. So men and women in dreams can represent your male and female aspects and female sides like I was talking about before. So a woman dying in, in her dream uh, is about you letting your female side die. And then the cardiac arrest is, is saying it can lead to physical issues with your heart. Not that it will, but it can. Um, and the reason it's your mom is because the longing for your mom and hoping she won't die in the dream will encourage you to do something so that uh, in one of the dreams your mom won't die or, or that you wake up and, and actually do something to help you not lose connection with your own female side. So it's actually a, it's a very common type of a dream to have. Now I'm looking for more short ones. Um, how long have we got left? One minute. Okay. I don't know if I have one short enough. <laughs> <laughs> did you talk? Did you want to talk about your new course? Yeah. Online? I suppose. So uh, for, I guess for people who, if the show yes, isn't last, enough. <laughs> last week we mentioned it. Uh, if you go to dreamtrackersguide.com, uh, you can find out all about the new course. Um, there are some free videos there that are scaled down versions of what's in the course. They're kind of out of context, but they're a bit fun to look at. Uh, last week I mentioned it, but they weren't there at the time. But they're all there now. 
So dreamtrackersguide.com, you can uh, learn about the rules of interpretation. Uh, then there's me explaining how to interpret a dream uh, in front of a, a blackboard. And then um, the next one that's going to be put up is about why do we dream of friends? Uh, and then there's, there's other stuff in there. So we're going to leave it at that. Uh, thanks to everybody for listening. Thank you for Heidi and Susan being here and contributing. Thanks to Eric Ryder, our producer and engineer. And we did have a quote from Groucho Marx, just a footy one. He says, uh, I find television very educational. Every time somebody turns on the set, I go into the next room and read a book. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.